Welcome to a gang of girls radio. Join your host, Ariel Grace. Ariel will bring you interviews with the best alternative experts on health and wellness, sustainability, astrology, metaphysics, spiritual, paranormal, and heroes from around the world. Now, here is your host of a gang of girls radio, Ariel Grace. WGOG Digital Broadcasting. Good evening, peeps. You are listening to A Gang of Girls Radio at Let's Talk Radio.net and A Gang of Girls.com. And tonight is an awesome show. It is, because you have asked me about house blessings and different things that you can do to bless your house energetically and help your help clear your house. And since it is um, like spring and we're going into summer, a lot of people are doing their clearing stuff. They're going through their things, getting rid of stuff and wanting their houses to be nice and sparkly on all levels. So we have an awesome guest tonight. And she's going to help us understand about ingredients. And she has blessing kits, too. So you'll we'll be like letting you know where to go to check that out and use some of the tools that she's provided for you. Okay? Uh, first, I got a couple of announcements. Um, I'm still doing $50 Fridays. I've had some emails asking about that. And, um, yes. Make appointments. Please make appointments beforehand because, uh, yeah, Fridays are kind of wild and crazy. All right. Now, for those of you who have asked me about monster spray and um, you don't have time to create the monster spray for your children and for your home, uh, you can check out naturallybydarla.com. Darla has created some monster spray. Yay! And it's awesome. Uh, so go to naturallybydarla.com, click on the Mists and Sprays tab. I think that's what it's called, Mists and Sprays. And you can order your Monster Spray there. It's nineteen or $18 plus shipping and handling. So um, make sure to go over there and get your Monster Spray. Yeah, for those of you who don't know what Monster Spray is, Monster Spray is to help your you and your psychic kid Um, It's for their bedside table so that they can spray their rooms before they go to bed. Raise the resonance of the room and clear the room so that they can have a good night's sleep. Okay, so naturallybydarla.com. All right. Now, um, check out a Gang of Girls radio blog every week so that you'll know our upcoming guests because we do have some really awesome upcoming guests. And for those of you who um, wanted to hear from Lisa Holbrook tonight. She lost her voice yesterday, and she still is not able to speak. So we're going to have Lisa Holbrook on next week with my bro, Psychic Theo, and we'll all be learning about pet psychics next week, and Theo will still be doing readings, so it'll be still fun for you. All right, for those of you who are hop skipping around on the internet, come on over, jump into chat. You can sign in through Facebook. You can sign in as a guest and be mysterious. Hmm, sometimes it's fun to be mysterious, right? Um, check out Let's Talk Radio for those of you who want advertising. We have some awesome. Um, we have some awesome things for advertising. So check out the. Check out the different ones. There's three different types of advertising there. So you can check that out, see what, see if anything resonates with you. So tonight we're interviewing Kim Moore. She is awesome. I got to talk to her on the phone. She's fun, too. So, hey, we only have fun people on the show, right? Right. So she does really awesome stuff, and this is her bio. Our homes can be our sanctuary helping us to feel safe and grounded in our world. There are times, however, when the energy in our homes can feel stuck or stagnant. This happens because there are days we feel stressed, overwhelmed, sad, frustrated, and a a variety of other emotions. 
The energy of these emotions can linger, especially if we tend to leave the windows closed, have clutter or ongoing stressors, frustrations, and grief. Every one of us has the ability to clear and bless our own living space, for that matter, your workspace as usual, as well, too. So clearing your home, we're going to talk about this because this is fun. You've asked about it, and now we get to introduce her. Hello, Kim. Hi, Ariel. How are you? I'm pretty good, pretty good. I'm glad you didn't lose your voice today. (laughs) No, no. I've got my voice. It's on full volume. (laughs) So, you know, what inspired you to empower people? Because you do a lot of different things. You're also a psychic medium, and you have your kids, and you do different events and fairs, too, right? You teach people to use their intuition. Is that right? Absolutely. I do all those things. Yeah, I do a lot of stuff. Um, what what kind of got me started with the house blessings, though, is that in general, um, for the most part, I do readings for people. I'm a psychic and a medium. So I talk to their loved ones and I also kind of offer insight and guidance into their lives. And then over time, people started asking me like to go out to their homes and see if I could clear and bless it. So I did start doing that. I kind of went how I was guided, but I also, you know, knew stuff like if you use sage, you can burn sage in a space to clear negativity. <clears throat> so I did a lot of research on on things you can use to bless your homes, and I was going out to people's houses and do, doing blessings with them. And over time, I kind of felt like it was more powerful for the person who owned the house to be doing the blessing as opposed to me. Um, I started wow. to realize that sometimes the negative energies people were feeling were just leftover vibes in the house. And I started figuring out ways to like bless things on my own so I could teach other people how to do it. So since then, I developed kits uh, that offer people full instructions to do it themselves. And uh, when I go out to their houses, I just do it with them and have them do it. Well, that's that is so awesome. Because I really, yeah, it is. Because so many people will just go and do it for them. And helping them or walking walking them through it, you know, really empowers them because they can take back their space. They can make their space their own. Exactly. And who better to do it than the homeowner or the resident, you know? Right. Like, it's their space. They're the ones that have to live there. So it should be their energy in the in the blessing, in the creation of whatever new things they want to bring in. And that's, does it, um, now with, with doing the blessings, so there's different um, intentions for the blessings. You, you can intend different things when you're working with the blessing, house blessings. Well, the way I look at it is I always use this analogy of like a closet. So with every blessing, you're going to clear away things. So just imagine like clearing out your closet. So you're clearing away any heaviness or anything in the space. And just like cleaning out a closet, you want to choose what you fill that closet with. You don't just want time to fill it up with you for you again. And then you're stuck in the same situation. So you set an intention just like with the closet of what you want it to look like moving forward in the future. And then you set that intention right after you clear. So you clear and bless and they just go hand in hand, like yin and yang. It just, you, you take it away and then you refill it with something that you want there. That's cool. How many, you know, how many times, um, should we bless our houses? Do we only bless them once? Um, is there, do we need to bless them for different things? Um, you know, well, what, This is, you know, this is (laughs) because I've heard, I've heard different things about it, you know, um, and I, I clear my house. I use different things to clear my house and I'll do it like once every three or four months or something just to, just to like let the sunshine in, ring some bells, break up residual energy, things like that. So, um, how often should we bless our houses? Well, It is as often as you feel a need. Um, And what that need is, is like when you start walking in your home and feel like the energy is a little heavy um, or things start to like not go well, 
you know, like uh, one day you're just really clumsy in the house and you don't know why or things don't work the way they're supposed to. That is also a time you can bless. Um, but you, you can bless it as often as you want, really. Uh, it's really just up to you and what feels right to you. So there's different tools that people use to bless their houses, and some of them have a much more long-lasting effect than others do. So as far as like when people talk about smudging, um, if, if you smudge a space with sage or sweetgrass or whatever it is that you use, mm -hmm. um, you can just do that anytime you feel there's a need for it. So sometimes it lasts for a while, but you start to feel a heaviness in the air. Um, and then you can just do it again. So they're not as long lasting. Um, but then some other things are like blessing salts. And so if you like, put blessing salt all around your property, um, it will last there for quite some time because it's in the energy of the ground, of the earth connected to the space. So it's very much like that movie Hocus Pocus where they were like protecting themselves from the witches and they're in right. the salt circle. <laughs> yeah, um, It's just <laughs> like that with your home and that lasts for a while. Like if you want to protect your land or your home or even your car in the driveway for them, <laughs> you, you can just leave the salt there. Um, and so that has a little bit more longer lasting effect than a smudge. Well, that see, that's cool that you're explaining the difference between it because, and that's also interesting how um, if you are putting the salt on the, the ground that is connected to your house too, to make, to also cleanse and, does the salt also protect the house as well? Exactly. Right. Yeah, and I'm a, I'm a big believer in if you live on a house on land, the whole thing is yours, not just what's in the house. Right. So even though land kind of clears itself automatically on its own, sometimes we just like those things, like feeling more protected in our space. And so you can just use a blessing blessing salt around the outside of your property and use that as a protection um, for your space. But you could also do it outside your doors and windowsills um, if you want to do that too. And it, it's just protective. I just always say like think hocus pocus. We're keeping <laughs> all that away. Um, so it's really, it's really good for that. Or you could just bathe with it. If you want to, if you want to clear your own energy, if you've had a hard day, you could take like an Epsom salt bath or sea salt and that will clear your energy very well. Um, too. So if you, whether it's yourself or your driveway, you can use salt for it. I would have never thought of putting it in the driveway. That's a really good, that's a really good idea, you know, oh, because, well, uh, well, it is because I would have never thought of that. Well, it's, and it's only because we, well, we live in a duplex, but um, our driveway actually is connected, the, the property, the land or whatever, our, our driveway is connected to it. And I was, I was like going, oh, that's interesting. Oh, okay. Yeah, that would work because yeah. it's all connected. So I like it that you're talking about that, that the whole instead of like just the house too. Because it is, a, you know, a lot of people ask me, well, isn't that an old wives tale? Like putting salt on the sills and things like that. And I'm like, it's old. It's a, and the wives were talking about it. So it's, there's got to be truth in it. <laughs> yeah. It's lasted this long, right? But the thing is, is that I look at it like almost if, if you think about it, salt is from the earth. Much like we use stones, like I also uh, sometimes do crystal, like a uh, little tumbled stone grids to kind of create intentions and spaces. But salt is, is very much from the earth. It's very much like an earthy substance and it, it protects us. So why not put earth back on the earth and keep us protected that way? So uh, like and eventually the salt will disappear, but it stays there. So the energy of it stays there a lot longer than how long you can see it. Is that that totally makes sense because it seeps into the earth. Yeah. So and it's from the earth, so it works out. Right. They know each other. <laughs> yeah, they know each other shaking hands. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, yeah exactly. I'm here. All right, cool. <laughs> exactly. Well there's also um like and I have these in my kits too, but <laughs> and it took me a long time to kind of figure out how to do that. Like I had to develop a formula for it. But what I have noticed also is if you want to bring an intention onto your land or into your home, 
you can take stones, like stones that, like tumbled stones, you don't have to buy like big crystals or anything, just little tumbled stones that have some kind of interpretation or meaning that really resonates with you where you feel very connected. And it's like those quartz and it's a good stone for love. So sometimes I have, um, and in my kits, this is part of the instructions, is out in the corners of the property and the corners of each level of the home, you put one little stone. Or if you want to create more than the energy of love, if you want to create prosperity, then you could add like a little adventuring or, or jade or something. But you could put that in the four corners of the property and then inside the home as well. Not in each room, but on the corners of each level of the house. Right. And they create like a grid of that energy so you're you're leaving that vibe that intention in the space of whatever it is that you want to create so if it's rose quartz it's love and you just put a love vibe in your house that's cool that you've said that you can use tumbled stones too because uh, i always feel that it doesn't matter how big or the shape of the stone really uh that you use as long as it goes with the intention of what you're doing you know, exactly. so that's cool because tumbled stones are everywhere. So peeps can pick exactly. pick up tum- tumbled stones and bring it in. And and there's so many people. You know, we live with families and we we want different things. And rose quartz is a great stone uh, for love, not just romantic love, but for all yeah. love. Yeah, that's all awesome. Love. Yay. And so it's nice. I like the basic um, recipe for like my peace, love and happiness kit is clear quartz, which is really easy to find, which g- gives you like a good clearing away any negative energy and then the rose quartz with it and then just paired in the corners. Um, and it just makes a huge difference. And it's it's small. It's small and inexpensive. But it makes a huge difference in the space and how it feels. And as long as those stones stay there and don't get vacuumed by the, <laughs> by the dog, um, they pretty much just last. Um, so I also give people like little plastic bags to put them in because they work just as strong if you have to leave them in a plastic bag so they don't get vacuumed or eaten by a kid. Right. Um, and it doesn't <laughs> matter if you put it on the floor or up in the window. If you have a weird shape in your house, it it's always just use your best judgment and you don't have to spend a lot on that kind of stuff. It's easy to find. Um, cause I, I don't think the universe sits there and is like, well, there's this price for you to be able to bless your home. <laughs> it's like, take whatever you need. It's all right there in the earth. So thank you for that. Thank you for saying that because I do feel like, uh, cause I, my personal thing is I love tumbled stones because they show so much of what the, the, the mineral or the, the gemstone or the crystal really looks like. And I, I feel like, you know, um, those are great things to have in our houses uh, yeah. to help us with the vibes of our house. So I knew I had a friend that had a rose quartz that was like a foot long and about six inches wide. And they'd had this rose quartz forever. And they always put it at the front door, like right next to the front door. And their thing mm-hmm. was, we keep the rose quartz there because we're only inviting in love. Exactly. I that's thought, beautiful. Wow, that's so cool. I'm like, what? Well, it's so it's such a huge rock. And they're like, well, we, it was a gift of love. So <laughs> that's, yeah. that's why we had it. And it was, it was an awesome thing because when you did walk into into their house, you could definitely feel that as you walked in. You could feel that resonance. It was really good. It was really awesome. Yeah. that's a, And that's how those stones work. And however they resonate with you, like there's so many different meanings for all the stones. But if something really resonates with you, whatever it is, that's kind of like your thing. So whatever stone it is, you can look up the meaning of it. But if it's something that really just touches your heart and feels good for you and you want that vibe in your home, then use that stone to create your grid. Yay. So, well, we're going to take a break here for just a second. You're listening to A Gang of Girls Radio on Let's Talk Radio.net and A Gang of Girls.com. When we come back, we'll be talking more about Kim's kits and she's got some handy tips for you, some more of them. So make sure you stay tuned.
If you call other talk stations, all you get is... Hello, we're sorry, but no one is available to answer your call at this time. But at Let's Talk Radio, we're here for the best talk, news, and information 24 hours a day. Hear it here first or find out about the alien invasion tomorrow from someone else. Depend on us. Let's Talk Radio. It's safe to say that we are not alone in the universe. Most of us believe in the existence of intelligent life elsewhere. But where are they? With over 19 years of extensive research, author, investigator, and ufologist Tom Conwell can only provide one answer. They are here. A series of books like no other that contains compelling evidence of UFOs on the East Coast. Volume 1. In the Central United States. Volume 2. And the Western U.S. Volume 3. Not only has Tom written about these sightings in his book series, but also painstakingly documented each report on a one-of-a-kind UFO sighting map of the entire United States. Could the eyewitness reports of thousands of people be wrong? Read Tom Conwell's They Are Here series and decide for yourself. They have eluded us. They have traveled far. They are here. Order your your proof today at theyarehere-conwell.com. That's theyarehere-conwell.com. Terry Lovelace is a 64-year-old retired lawyer and former assistant attorney general. The earliest alien experience Terry can recall was when he was eight years old. Incident at Devil's Den. In May of 1963, he saw a UFO and described it as a perfect silver disc. Three years later, on a clear night, he saw a second flying disc outside his second story bedroom window. Incident at Devil's Den. In 1975, while serving as a medic in the Air Force, he witnessed yet another UFO hovering 50 feet over an ICBM missile silo. Incident at Devil's Den. Two years later, while he and a friend were camped in an isolated state park known as Devil's Den, Terry had a life-changing fourth encounter. Not only did Terry and a friend witness an estimated five-story high UFO, but this fourth encounter would be an epic, life-altering event. Incident at Devil's Den by Terry Lovelace. Digital download or paperback now available on Amazon. When it absolutely, positively has to be the best. WGOG DB Clearwater. Let's talk. Twenty-three past the hour, and you're listening to a Gang of Girls Radio on Let's Talk Radio.net and a Gang of Girls.com. And if you're hopping and skipping around the internet, please join us in chat. Remember to put your questions in capital letters. If you have questions for Kim, please put them in capital letters so we know that the questions are for her, and that way I can ask her in that, um, and I'll see them. Because <laughs> I'm scrolling back and forth between notes and the chat room. So that way we can get them to her. All right. So we were talking about house blessings and, you know, how you can bless your house and how empowering it is for you to bless your house and that you can do it anytime you feel you need to. And we're also talking about blessing the ground Outside, you know, because your the ground, the earth outside of your house is part of your house, that property and that. So um, we're talking about the blessing salts, different kinds of salts that you can use, but blessing salts are good. And Kim has some kits on her website. You can go to readingsbykim.com and see the menu over there. You can click on the kit thing and go scroll down because she has some really cool different kits for blessings. Okay? And that way uh, you can look at them through the descriptions and see if anything resonates with you because you never know what can happen. Right? Right. Okay. 
So we were talking about house blessings, and also we were talking about um, how it empowers you that Kim comes in and she helps you or she guides you through the blessing, which is really cool too, isn't it? Wouldn't it be fun for you to bless your own house? Ha! Huh, that's awesome. All right. <laughs> so, Kim, <laughs> yes. you know, well, you were talking about um, the different things from the earth and that they come from the earth and they go back into the earth, especially the salt. Now, with your bl- different kids, you know, um, what is or how many different kids did you create? There's about five or six of them, correct? Yeah, there's a, a and, and I made these kits kind of just based on what people asked for. So I have a very basic blessing kit called Tranquility and Stability. And that's just to clear away any negative energy and just bring some peace in. And then, the, so that's not so much about an intention as much as just clearing away anything negative. Like, a, a, you know, just getting, just getting the carpet vacuumed. And then I have different um, kits on top of that where things are added um, to add an intention. So there's a peace, love, and happiness kit. There's a show me the money kit. There's a whole spiritual health kit um and there's also a safety and safe and sound kit and then for people who can't decide there's an everything but the kitchen sink kit (laughs) um, which is all the kits together um but really the differences in the kits are the different stones used in the crystal grids um and different like little trinkets or tokens i like to call them um that you would use to like create a wish or like you could take a shark tooth and put it over the door frame um, of your house for protection. Oh. So like in the safe and sound kit, there's a shark tooth and you just take it and put it over the entryway of your home and it's for protection. You can use a shark tooth or an arrowhead and it's wow. a trinket. It's a little token, but that's what it makes you think of. And by putting it on that space with the intention behind it of protection, it kind of makes it so that when things come into your house that they're cleared with the like a filter of of protecting you in, in your space. That's well, we have a question from chat from Rebecca and she wants to know, does Kim have testimonials for her health kits? Um, I actually do but we don't usually put them on the website that much. <laughs> um, right. usually they're about not me doing readings and stuff. Um, but there are people, um, what they've said is that they just feel happier and more comfortable in their home. Um, and the health stuff, it's whole spiritual health. So that particular kit isn't just about physical health. It's about emotional health. It's about spiritual health. It's about um, like mental health. So the stones that are in that kit are to affect all of those areas. Um, and I believe that one uses carnelian and amethyst, um, which are stones that you can get anywhere. Um, and those are the stones used in the crystal grid. Um, and then that particular kit also has a token in it, which is a wishing bean, actually. So it's a little bean. It has some essential oils on it um, that are drawing oils or health oils, uh, like to draw good health to you. Oh. Um, and so you hold on to the bean and you just sit there and meditate and put your energy into it. And then you can plant it. And if you live in an apartment, you can just stick it in a, um, in a planter. But it's not going to grow. <clears throat> so it's not like... It's not like Jack and the Beanstalk. The idea <laughs> is, is that the energy kind of creates it or grows that for you. Right. So whatever it is that you want to create better health around, you put that intention into that bean, push it in the ground, and then it, so it's it's the idea of, it's the intention of that growing um, for you, just like a plant would grow. That's cool. Now, with, with your kits, do you do you have instructions on how to create Absolutely. crystal crystal grids? Because you keep talking about crystal grids, and I I like crystal grids. They're fun. Oh yeah. Well, the instructions are full. Like every single thing you could possibly want to know, <laughs> and then some extra stuff. So the instructions are complete. Um, and then there's also um, instructions for like doing a little feng shui. 
um, if you like that uh, in your home. And there's also instructions for other kinds of um, uh, like ceremonial kind of blessing things that you can do um, with like uh, rubbing alcohol and, and salt. Um, but th- those things are, there's just uh, information in there for people to read. And if they want to do that, that's fine. Um, but I also encourage people to look into whatever it is that kind of speaks to them that's in so the instructions. Awesome. So it has it, everything in there. Yeah. So it's up to them what they, what they can use and how they can use it if it resonates with them. And I, I feel like that's, that's an awesome way to put it, too, because, again, it empowers the person that's giving the blessing. So I yeah. like the magic bean thing. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, there's a magic bean in one. There's, uh, like, it really just has essential oils on it. There's also a butterfly um, for change, to bring change in. Uh, there's also, uh, and then the shark tooth. So they are just three little trinkets that come in the different kits, um, but, but what they do is they kind of draw your intention to it. And by leaving it in those particular spaces or like planting it and let it grow, um, you're basically putting your intention on it so that you can manifest that. Right. You're raising your awareness too, because every time you may pass that space, yeah. you're, you also go, oh yeah, that's right. And you put more energy into it, which is exactly. really, that's fun. Yeah, and you don't have to sit there and think about it all the time. No. Um, but it's like every time you remember it, and and then that just kind of puts another nail in that strong piece of wood of protection or, or love or whatever the idea is that you're wanting to create. You're just adding nails to it, therefore, like, increasing. I guess maybe that's not the best analogy, but you know what I'm saying. Yes. <laughs> adding to it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, and I, I think that's cool, too, because I feel like the more positive energy we put into something, you know, when we're reminded of it, and we're pa- maybe we pass it every day, and we're like, oh, yeah, the shark tube's up there. Cool. We, yeah. we're, we become aware of it again, and then we say, oh, yeah, that's right. That's what it's there for. And so we see that symbol or we see that item and it helps us. It helps us because then we we put that energy back into it. So, exactly. yeah, that's cool. I love it that you, you know, the intention of it. And I like it that um, that you you keep mentioning Um, crystal grids again I'm just because crystal grids to me like there are some that are very simple and then there are some that are really you know intricate but like you said putting the uh, rose quartzes and the quartz crystals out in the corners of the house that's making a very simple crystal simple yet very powerful crystal grid Exactly. And it doesn't, I mean, you can definitely make anything in the kit more complicated. You can add to anything if you want. But I wanted to like, be able to let people know how simple it was to be able to do it on your own. Um, And so the crystal grids, they don't have to be intricate. They're just basically if you create kind of like that square or whatever the space is, not everybody's house is square or rectangle, um, but whatever it looks like, if you can kind of get that vibe coming to the center, then you're basically like covering the whole house. And I always tell people to do it on each level of the house. And, and not like an attic so much, but if you have a basement with like a laundry room or maybe you have a few things stored in there, to even do it on that level as well um, because everything in that space carries in or everything is energy. And so the energy in the space, it kind of creates that intention even at the lowest level of the house where you're just leaving your laundry and your stuff that you're storing Um, But it's very powerful to leave that intention on every single level with the crystal grids. And you can make, you can, you can expand. Like my kits only have a couple of of different stones for different things. But if you want to expand and use a bunch of different stones, then that's fine too. It's just you get whatever resonates with you and put it in those corners. And it's kind of creating this really strong, energetic grid Yeah, that anyone can use. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's awesome. Well, you know, um, I think that's awesome. So how many of you out there that are listeners, our peeps, how many of you have created crystal grids in your homes? And what is it that you felt when after, before you put the grid in and after you put the grid in? Let us know. You can let us know in chat. We want to know. You know, because they do, uh, you know, I feel like they make a difference. What about you? Do you feel like they make a difference? So now you've been giving us some handy tips. <laughs> yeah. You have been giving us some handy tips. But, you know, I I like the, the kitchen. I just want to go over the kitchen sink one because when I read that one, I was like, this girl knows what she's talking about. <laughs> Because Kim has a blessing kit called Everything and the Kitchen Sink. <laughs> no, everything but the kitchen everything sink. but no the kitchen, kitchen sink. sink. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so now, why did you why did you create that kit? You know, were you, was it just because one day you woke up smiling and you said, you know, yeah, I'm gonna do it. No, no, that <laughs> shit is what happened when I. I, that is all of the kits combined in that one because what happens is people can't decide. Sometimes they want love and then protection or they want, you know, like better health and, and they want love in their life. And so they couldn't make up their minds. So why get two kits? Why not just get one that covers all of it? And so the everything but the kitchen sink is just a compilation of all the kits in one. Okay, so and that's my best selling one. <laughs> that well, one. yeah, <laughs> that's the one I would well, get. I, yeah, I mean, it's it's for people like me who can't make up their mind, and so I'm like, oh well, I don't know which one I'd get. I'd get all of them, and as it turns out, I meet a lot of people like me, <laughs> so <laughs> that works out. Okay, well, we have a couple of questions from chat. And okay. one of them is, again, from um, from Rebecca, and she wants to know, um, like, say, for example, uh, if she bought the kit with the shark tooth in it, would, if she moved from one home to another, could she just take that shark tooth? And yeah. Yes. Okay, so yes. I mean, I mean, you could. I would say just get a new one um, just because the energies of each house are different, mm -hmm. but you could conceivably do that. Like if, if that's cool with you, do it, you know, but if it, if it was me, I'd change it, but I'm sitting here like kind of letting whatever information comes to me. And I know that would be okay. That would be totally okay. So it doesn't matter whether, you know, for me, I'd be like, yeah, I'll get a new one. But for you, if, if you are cool taking it, then absolutely take it. It's not going to make any, it's not going to make it any more or less powerful. Okay, cool. And then Darla has a question. She says, how often, if ever, do you recommend clearing your house? How often to change or cleanse the crystals used in the grid? So, I would say as far as the crystals in the grid go, um, as long, long as they're pretty like... Ugh, so every few months I check mine uh, is what I'm going to say. I check them, make sure they're still there. And then sometimes they're like dusty or grimy or gross or whatever, or something's missing and I have to replace it. But I just wash them off and put them back. Um, and the thing is, is that stones have been here for millions of years. So they don't necessarily, they, they, they kind of clear themselves in a way. But if you feel like you need to clean your stones or even like recharge them, Another thing you can do is Epsom salt is great for clearing. Um, you can use sea salt, but Epsom salt is sometimes easier to find. You can find it at Walmart. You put your stones in that overnight. You put your stones out um, underneath the full moon moonlight to charge them. Uh, so whatever you want to do to charge your stones, wh whatever you feel. like. So if you feel like they're not as powerful as they were when you initially put them down and maybe it's been six months, then you would just clear those stones or just wash them off sometimes that's really all they need they get a little grime on them and they just need a little washing and that's about it right yeah because i know with me i like i like to take mine down and actually give them a bath once every six months or so <laughs> yeah it's and like that it's you really <laughs> just kind of do whatever feels right to you mm -hmm. but i mean mine sometimes i'm just like 
this one needs bath right now. And sometimes <laughs> I just kind of leave them there for a while. Um, and, and as far as changing those, I do not think you need to change the stones. I, I feel like stones are much more of, of a very like long lasting intention in the space. So they do not necessarily need to be like switched out or changed. Unless you want to change the vibe of the space, of course, then you would change some of the stones. But they're long lasting, like much longer than sage or anything like that as far as intentions go. That's okay. That's awesome because, um, you know, we might not have known that. Some people might be like getting rid of stones because they feel like maybe it's not powerful enough or it's not doing its job. And um, that's a good thing to know. Uh, yeah, and if you're feeling that way, just charge them up in the moonlight or throw them in some Epsom salt and they'll be fine. All right. See, y'all can save your stone, stones now. Just give them a bath or put them in the moonlight. <laughs> now, what, what about now? What about sunlight? You know, do some of the do stones, um, can that assist with clearing as well? Yeah, so you could do it in the sunlight or the moonlight. I just like the moonlight, but sunlight works as well. As far as um, stones go, sometimes people like to put them in water. And for some reason, it's just coming to my head. So if your stone, the type of stone you have, ends in I-T-E, um, I would tell you never to put that in water. Like selenite, um, celestite, any of those, with the or kyanite, um, because they dissolve or they kind of fall apart in water. Um, but sometimes people also put, put their stones in water in the sunlight or in the moonlight as well. But, it, but before I made that recommendation, I just wanted to say if it ends in ITE, it probably is not good for water. So, like well, most of the other polished stones are. What about like if they wanted to, if they have specific, you know, specific purpose, then they could have stones for that specific pers- purpose and other specific purposes, right? I know yeah. that. Oh, yeah, because yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm just saying that that particular stone will get destroyed if they paid money for it. <laughs> so right. in water, but regardless of whatever intention you want to create, some people just put it in water. Some people put it in the sunlight. Some people put it in the moonlight. Some people put it in Epsom salt. But those are all different ways to recharge those stones. Okay, so remember that, peeps: selenite, celestite, kyanite. Anything that ends with I-T-E, um, don't leave it in the water so that it doesn't disintegrate. Yeah, it's just, it's kind of like a flakier rock. So so it just won't be as cool as it used to be if you leave it in water. But they can use any of the other three methods, the moonlight, sunlight, or salt, and be absolutely fine. Cool. Yay. All right. Now, um, with your... <laughs> I'm just still cracking up about the kitchen sink one. Um, okay, because <laughs> I laughed about that for a while the other day. I was like, every time I thought about it, I thought it was great. Now, um, with with the blessings, though, I know that you're talking about ingredients right now. But let's talk about, like, words and intentions, too, that go with blessings. What if a person um, can't get a blessing kit or um, they're... You know, they don't have mail or maybe they live in Fiji or something like that and they're listening, which would be awesome. But they want <laughs> they wanted to bless their houses. Now, are words just as powerful as using um, the different ingredients or is it yeah. the combination that creates the whole effect? Um, I think it's a little bit of both, but words are equally powerful. And one thing that I do with that, which is a little bit more like this is kind of how I started doing these years and years ago, and I just did it for myself. But I used to get like clear uh, candles that had like the clear glass around it. So, you know, the big, tall kind of like white yes. religious candles. <laughs> so I would get those and I would write on the candle, everything that I wanted to bring into my life, everything I I wanted to bring into my space, into my life. And then sometimes be on a full moon or a 
new moon. And that's just because that's my belief system. You can light it whenever you want. I just light it and let it burn fully. And leaving that intention in my space for a week or four days or however long it took for that candle to burn out. And every time I peeked and looked at it, it always reminded me that that was my intention in my space. And that was kind of how I started doing this. So even though there's other tools that would amplify those words and intention i always started with the words and so that's one thing in the kits that comes is a little glass candle but people have those all over their house permanent marker works just as well yes tall (laughs) candles are available like at any grocery store and that would be an awesome way to get started if you happen to have like um some bills kim we um we're gonna have to go run to a break But when we come back, we can talk about the essential oils and what can go into candles, too. So you're listening to A Gang of Girls Radio on letstalkradio.net and agangofgirls.com. In a world of many voices, there's just one that needs to be heard. Yours. Join the conversation at Let's Talk Radio.net. In 2012, Keith Linder, after successfully obtaining a management position at a prestige healthcare company, decides the time is right for him and his girlfriend to move in together. That's putting things lightly. Weird things begin to happen within days of moving into the modern suburban home. The horrors they witnessed and desperately tried to fight off would end up putting them at the odds with members of the paranormal community and themselves. This gripping story told from the house occupant's point of view not only lists tales, but also includes pictures, video reenactments, commentary, and audio of the events being reported. Author Keith Linder does not ask you to believe him. He only asks you to listen. The Bothell Hell House by Keith Linder, now available on Amazon. The book, The Bothell Hell House. The author, Keith Linder. Order yours today on Amazon. Since 1948, Fate Magazine has delivered a -a one-of-a-kind reading experience, covering everything from psychics, UFOs, paranormal investigations, and more. To subscribe, visit fatemag.com or call 828-702-3032. That's 828-702-3032. Subscribe and find your true reports of the strange and unknown at FateMag.com. Forty-seven past the hour, and you're listening to a Gang of Girls Radio on Let's Talk Radio.net and a Gang of Girls.com. And we are talking to Kim Moore tonight, and she was talking to us about blessings and the different things that we can do with stones. Uh, she was talking to us about the old wives' tale, about the salt. Mm-hmm. Yes, she was, mm-hmm. <laughs> which is awesome. And now she's going to, we were just talking about candles and the, you know, the kind of candles that you can get from the grocery store, those, the candles in the glass the, they're in glass containers and they're different heights than that. And um, so you used to, you would write or you wrote on the candles what your intentions were and just let the candle burn out? Exactly. And so then I started using like uh, different essential oils with it just to kind of amplify my intentions. And so like a really good one if you want to if you want to amplify prosperity is to use like orange oil. And all you do is just put it on your fingertip, put it on the top of the candle and light it. That's it. You don't need to use a lot of it or anything. You just need like a finger's tip worth. Um, if you want to bring love, you use rose oil. If you want to bring like peace and tranquility, you can use lavender. Um, any any kind of essential oil that speaks to you or some metaphysical stores have have different kind of blessing uh, oils already pre-made. So, so you can use that, and you don't have to use an essential oil. It's just like an amplifier. 
to what your intention is. So everything we even talked about today is just an amplification of your intention as you clear away negativity and what you want to refill that closet, what you want to bring back into your space. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. So now, while we were on break, Kim told me something really interesting that I know you all will be interested in, and I'm pretty sure you'll show up. So, Kim, how can people connect with you, and where are you going to be, what are you going to be be doing, and how are you going to be doing it? (laughs) Okay. Um, So, if people want to connect with me, the best way to do it is you can do it on the website at readingsbykim.com. My blessing kits are on there under blessing kits. We're adding a new um, link on there very soon for um, the home sweet home shop I have, which is all blessing supplies and kits. Um, And you can also see me. um, I do like live readings on Facebook once every other week, it seems like, on Thursday nights. And um, so my Facebook is medium and psychic Kim Moore. um, And you can find me there. You're always welcome to ask me questions, send me an email, anything about house blessing. Um, Either me or my assistant will get back to you. And then the other thing is, and we're still working on setting up a date, but it's coming in the next month that I'll be teaching a a free online workshop um, through live video. So you'll actually see me um, of how to bless your home. So like how to light sage, how to put it away, how to use the blessing salt and all those things will be in the live class. And it's totally free because I really do believe that everyone should be able to bless and clear their own space and make it their own. So that will be coming up as well. But if you follow me, through uh, my website and just say you want to be on our newsletter list or if you follow me on uh, Facebook. We also have an Instagram and Twitter. I don't use it as much. Um, But anyway, uh, you're welcome to join in those things or the free live reading on every other Thursday night on Facebook. That's awesome that you do that. So it's every other Thursday. What time um, every other Thursday night? Is it like around 7 Central? Yeah, uh, 7 Mountain Standard Time. So it's uh, seven my time. So like where you are now, it's eight fifty one, and here it's six fifty one. Okay, <laughs> so around so two nine, hours back, nine Eastern, seven Central, or wait, eight, yeah, eight Eastern, seven Central, five Pacific time. Everyone on Thursday, every other Thursday night, with psychic medium Kim Moore on Facebook. Is that what it's called? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And that's, it's just a free thing that I like to do. So I talk for a little while and then do a reading and they're mostly um, mediumship readings because I also love connecting people with their loved ones. Oh, and one thing, when people clear their houses, they're not getting rid of their loved ones. Their loved ones always stay. So when you clear and bless your house, your loved ones will always be close. It doesn't matter that you're getting away negative to you. So I thought I thought I'd mention that. I think that's <laughs> so. a good thing to mention because um, I have also received that question too. Is that do we clear out you know our our relatives that come visit and that? So that's no. a that's a good thing. So you don't clear out the friendlies. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they stay because they have bonds of love with you and they want to be close and help you in your life. So they will always be close. You just clear away the icky vibes in a space uh, that you might feel after an argument or a bad day at work or after you've been grieving over a loss. Those are the things that go away. That's a, that's really good to know because we want to make sure that our houses are clear of any heavy residual energy. But, you know, I would think, too, that our ancestors and relatives would want the houses to be clear and blessed so that if they have a message for us, we would be able to hear them or or maybe even see the message that they're trying to give us. So would a house blessing help with that? Um, sometimes a house blessing helps with that. But if your loved one wants to communicate with you, they're going to communicate with you. <laughs> they're going to make sure you get a message through a sign or something. But the thing is, is that our loved ones in the spirit world always want the best for us. They want us to live good lives and be happy. And when our spaces are clear and we're able to just be in the natural flow of life and abundance and friendship and love, they thrive on that. 
So as far as loved ones wanting us to clear our spaces, absolutely. I think, I think it's just so good for us to be able to bless our space and feel the presence of our loved ones as they're there to support and love us and guide us. But grief is the thing that really stands in the way of that connection and <laughs> not knowing the signs. They'll come no matter what. Right. Well, and, you know, with the whole grief thing, having a reading by you, a psychic medium reading with you can assist them, though, because they can get that or start receiving that closure that they need in order to move forward. Absolutely. And I even wrote a book about it. I forgot to mention that. Well, (laughs) here we go. (laughs) It's also my website called Life After Life. And because I've been doing mediumship readings for so long, I thought I would teach people how to connect on their own and what signs to look for and answer like the really most common questions. Like it's just a handbook for what happens to our loved ones in the spirit world, but also about the grieving process, what to say, what not to say. And that is also on my website. And that is very helpful as well. Well, that's awesome. And what's the book called again? It's called Life After Life. Life After Life. And it's at readingsbykim.com. So for those of you yep. out there that, you know, need that or have a curiosity about it, check out her book um, there on her website. It's, it's right there. And because we do encourage people to move through their grieving processes as they can, not to have to rush. Yeah. Exactly. And your loved ones are by you no matter what. Time is is not like it is here. So they're just with us as long as there's a need. And if there's a need your whole life, then they're with you. That's awesome to know. Yeah. You know It's nice, it's comforting and they, they dig us. So that's good. <laughs> there are loved ones in the spirit world, they love us and they want us to thrive and be happy, so it's just beautiful that they're around us, sending us their own energy and love. And when we clear our space and the energy we're putting out in the world and receiving is all so clear and blessed and beautiful. Well, and this is a question that I get a lot. I'm not a psychic medium. I don't normally do readings like that. But people do ask me a lot, how are their relatives doing? And I always tell them they're great. They're fine. It feels good. Yeah, they're good. Now, <laughs> How about you? Well, is that is that mostly how it goes? As a yeah, psychic medium? And, and I know that they are having a good old time in the spirit world because think how awesome life would be if you never had to worry about bills or getting somewhere on time and you could be everywhere all at once. <laughs> and so life would be kind of awesome like that. Um But they do go through healing in the spirit world. So if they struggled in the living world, they heal in the spirit world and they watch us um, as we kind of heal through our grief and our issues with them. And they're always close. So there's this kind of reciprocal relationship um, between us and the spirit world that's healing. And so they're doing good over there and they're bringing that love right back to us. And as we heal here, we bring it right back to them. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. Well, I'm so glad that you could come and be on the show tonight because I feel like a lot of people are going, oh, yeah, this is fun and this is awesome. So check out Kim at readingsbykim.com and you can find her on Facebook as well. If you go to a Gang of Girls Radio um, Facebook page too, if you forget go there. Her info is all over that page as well. So that way you can connect with her and check out her blessing kits. They're so awesome. Thank you for being a guest tonight, Kim. And uh, you'll probably be back on the show. <laughs> oh, well, thank uh, it was you. very thank fun you for, for us. having me. You're welcome. All right. So everyone, we are going to be checking out the top of the hour news. And um, in the next hour, as I said, Lisa Holbrook, 
she lost her voice yesterday, and um, so she won't be with us during the second hour. However, next week she'll be with us with my bro, Psychic Theo. He's in chat right now. So uh, she will be assisting with talking to us about pets, pet communication, and she might even do a couple readings while Theo's doing people readings. So we'll do pet readings and people readings Next week, in the next hour of the show, we're going to be talking about accountability and we're going to do the ancestral, um, the ancestral meditation so that we can like clear up some ancestral lines, baby. It'll be very fun for us. So thank you very much. And you're listening to a gang of girls radio on let's talk radio.net and a gang of girls.com. See you in a minute. stations in the world. We're one of them. WGOG Digital Broadcasting. Let's talk. No hesitation. I'm Paul Stevens, Fox News. Police are calling 29-year-old James Shaw Jr. a hero for saving lives early today at a Waffle House restaurant in Tennessee. Shaw making a split-second decision to challenge a lone shooter who started firing after he burst in. I just knew it was... It was me or him or that type of that type of scenario. So I chose to go with what I wanted to go with and it worked. Shaw was slightly injured. Four people were killed. That lone suspect, 29-year-old Travis Ryan King, is still on the loose. Police think he may be armed. He was uh, wearing only a green jacket when he ran out of the restaurant. He was arrested also back in 2017 by the Secret Service for trespassing near the White House. Another pinch at the pump. Gas prices rising again, up nine cents in the past two weeks to an average two eighty-three a gallon. It was almost entirely higher crude oil prices. Those are already mostly built into the. Re- Retail price. Uh, a small amount of it was also the shift to higher uh, cost gasoline required in the summertime. Gas and oil analyst Trilby Lundberg, San Francisco, the highest price in the Continental 48 at 368 a gallon. Baton Rouge, Louisiana, the lowest at 245. Iran's foreign minister warning the U.S. against pulling out of the international nuclear agreement. This is not a bilateral agreement between Iran and the United States, and withdrawing from it uh, would be seen by the international community uh, as a an indication that the united states is not a reliable partner iran's foreign minister mohammad javad zarif on cbs has faced the nation that deal giving iran relief from sanctions in exchange for freezing its nuclear program at least 57 people are dead over 100 wounded after a suicide bombing this morning in kabul afghanistan that targeted a voter registration center you're listening to fox news fair and balanced Council. International inspectors finally on the ground in Syria looking for evidence following suspected chemical weapons attacks earlier this month. They're not having much luck so far, or at least what's coming out uh, in terms of gathering much information, in large part because it's just very difficult to gather information two weeks after a chemical attack, particularly uh, what they suspect is a chlorine attack. But they are there on the ground after a lot of delays trying to gather information. And obviously we will get a report here in the near future. But their main goal is not to assess blame and who may have carried out the attack, simply to state if an attack did actually happen. Fox's Connor Powell, the attacks in Duma leading to allied airstrikes on suspected chemical weapon sites in Syria. A missing three-year-old girl was found safe in Australia thanks to a 17-year-old dog who found that girl and stayed by her side all night long. Police saying the girl wandered off in a rural area, but Max, a partially blind and completely deaf dog, managed to find the girl and guard her until a search party found them on Saturday. Lisa Bennett is the missing girl's grandmother. It was really disheartening at two o'clock in the morning when everyone left and we were standing here alone in the darkness knowing a three-year-old was out in the cold. That dog staying by the girl's side for more than 15 hours. Six hospitalizations, no deaths though, following a salmonella outbreak that led to a recall of 200 million eggs. In the current outbreak, the eggs in question were distributed from a farm in Hyde County, North Carolina. Rose Acre Farm says this is the first recall for this facility 
facility, which has temporarily suspended delivery of shell eggs. In the meantime, the company is filling orders from its other farms around the country. In Atlanta, Jonathan Sari, Fox News. That outbreak covering nine states. Polls are closed. Results expected tomorrow from voting in one of Italy's smallest regions, but experts say it could help right-wing leaders in Rome actually form a government following inconclusive elections seven weeks ago. I'm Paul Stevens, Fox News Radio. There are thousands of health and beauty products on the market these days. But how many can you say are truly natural? The name says it all. And Naturally by Darla is here to humbly serve, guide, and help to heal all individuals seeking a more natural way of living. NaturallyByDarla.com provides a wide variety of products and services like essential oils, soaps, balms and salves, powerful mists, and ancient healing techniques. Curious yet? We thought so. And invite you to visit our website, naturallybydarla.com, or call 847-334-1580. That's 847-334-1580. Naturallybydarla.com. Humbly serving for over 10 years. Naturally. And you're listening to A Gang of Girls Radio on Let's Talk Radio.net and A Gang of Girls.com. And we are here tonight. It was very fun to listen to Kim Moore, right? So if you want to check out uh, her website, remember to go to Kim, re- or Readings by Kim. Dot com And their blessing kits are there. And there's a lot of really good information there as well. And we'll be letting you know when her free blessing, house blessing workshop is. That way, um, it's a good reminder for you. And you can, you know, you can walk through it with her. That'll be fun for you. And then you can try it on your own. Or you can try it even tomorrow on your own. And see if there's a difference in the way your home feels. Yeah? That's kind of neat because it's spring now, and that's the been the focus of a lot of folks here. So, you know, check it out. Make that intention. Get that candle. Do what is good for you. Right? All right, cool. Okay, so we have the Clarity 101 blog at um, ariograce.net, and then we have a Gang of Girls radio blog at a gangofgirls.com. Now, you can check out both of those blogs every week because I do blog uh, pretty much every week on Clarity 101 and a Gang of Girls radio especially. So uh, I'm still doing $50 Fridays. It's 45 minutes for $50. Uh, please book ahead of time. Yeah. Um, this Saturday, I'm going to be doing $60 for an hour. So for those of you that can't um, make it on Friday, I'm doing that one more time and that way we can get everybody in it's very fun for you all right so if you are looking for a psychic medium check out psychic theo you can check him out at psychictheo.com he can help you out he's also going to be on the show next week we're going to be doing readings it'll be very fun for us he's there in chat right now so you can go in and say hi to him that's very fun all right now for those of you who want an astrology consult, you can check out Rockin' Reverend Rhonda at karmiclaw.com. She is also the author of Sister Sage's Astrological Journey, and uh, you can get that on Amazon or at karmiclaw.com. Um, for those of you who want a reading for from Rhonda during the show, the astrology show, you can send me your birth time, place, and date with a question to a gang of girls inc at gmail.com and I'll get that over to Rhonda for you. She'll do the readings. She does the readings live in the second hour of the astrology show once a month. For those of you who are interested in a medical intuitive, you can check out Marcella Zinner at MarcellaZ.com. And uh, she's you know, she's pretty rocking. She's been on the show as well. 
So um, for those of you who are looking to change your life in a very different but fun way, you can check out Life, the Life Magic Program from Laura Bushnell. She is offering our listeners a 35% off the retail price, which is $398. And you have to add shipping and t- handling to that. You can email joy at laurabushnell.com and put a gang of girls radio there in the subject line. That way they know that it's from a gang of girls radio. Okay, so I'm actually doing this, the Life Magic program right now. I've been doing it for two weeks now and um, I do feel like I, I feel it lighter. I feel brighter. I feel um, less uh like my head doesn't feel like it's in a vice grip <laughs> i actually feel lighter so if you're interested check out laurabushnell.com and you can read up on that particular product it's called life magic program all right so during the second hour of the show, if you have questions for me, remember to put them in capital letters so I see them in chat. I'll be going back and forth from my notes, and that way I can answer the questions for you. Um, we're going to be talking about accountability because um, some sometimes we, we wonder or we do things and we're like, why the heck did I do that? Holy cow, I've done it 10 times already. Why the heck do I do that? So accountability is for making your, it's, it's making yourself stop and be accountable for what you're doing. And even, even if it's, you know, recognizing that it is, um, something that doesn't help you. So like, say you always go back to the same person the same, in the same way, um, same subject, same everything. And then afterwards, when you're walking away, you're like, what the heck did I just do? (laughs) That's accountability by saying, what the heck did I just do? And how can I stop doing this? What, how can I build a strategy on that? So, um, it's about breaking habits that don't serve us. And being accountable for them, saying, yeah, okay, let's make a strategy. So some of the ways of being our habits we have formed are learned from our elders. Yes, and they are learned their way, our elders' way of being from their elders and so on. There are some of you who think your family line might even be cursed because of the generational habits. Now, and, and I've had clients ask me, you know, do, is, my, is my family cursed? Um, mo- most of the time, I would say uh, pretty much 99.9% of the time, your family is not cursed. And it's, it's, it's a lot of it is generational stuff. It's what we've been taught from our moms or dads. They were taught from their moms or dads, you know, and so maybe it's an antiquated way of thinking. And so it's come down to this place where you're going, wait a second, this this doesn't work for me now because look at all this. Look how different everything is now. It doesn't work. And so by looking at what you were taught, because what we know and what we uh, align with a lot of times is what we were taught with as children. And so um, as children, then we grow up and we're, we're like, wait, this isn't working. Or look at all these things that have happened to my family because of this way of thinking. Our family must be cursed. No, it's not cursed. It's just you just have to break the chain. That's all. So, you know, and there's like... Um, Looking at your family line and talk to your family about the characteristics that members had or have. What do you think about them? How can you break the habits that don't serve your family? You can break the habit by saying, oh, you know what? I'm going to try this a different way and see how it works. And yeah, you're going to have to stand there and go, oh, gosh, I did it again. But that's okay. Next time I won't. And the more times that you work on being aware and being present, um, 
and saying, you know, this didn't work. That's right. Okay, go back. And even if it, you have to do it a bunch of times, it's okay because you're raising your awareness each time that you don't want that type of energy. Okay? So be kind to yourself, especially when you're trying to change an old habit. You know, be kind to yourself. Say, okay, yeah, I have to remember this. Even if you have to write it down every day to make sure that you're doing that different thing rather than the old thing. So don't be angry with your family. See it as a lesson, a lesson of how not to be. Now look at your life, yours alone, and make some decisions on how you want your life. So here's an example. Perhaps as a child, you were not protected by your parents and you grow up feeling you are not worthy of anything for lack of care for your parents. So you realize that um, you realize the problem and then you say, you know what? I am worthy. I am worthy of everything that I so want and desire. And so it may take you some time and it's OK to go. Oh, yeah, that's right. I am worthy. I'm good. I got it going on. And so and change that habit, that way of being so that you're feeling better about you because it's it all comes down to you anyway it comes down to how you feel about you how do you feel about you hmm that's a question that you should ask yourself you know and really sit down and look at the answer to that and see what it is that you can change to make yourself or have yourself feel better about who you are and what you are worthy of so um the other thing is, um, the other example is, uh, I knew a man who uh, blamed him, blamed his unhappiness or his imbalance on his father. Okay, so he really did. And so his father would beat him every time he, he thought that the child did something wrong. Over time, this man had would have disappointment or felt as though he had done something wrong or something bad. He wanted to be punished as a man. And so because this man could not forgive his father or change his habits, he really drove himself um, to mental imbalance. He drove himself so far into mental imbalance that people just could not be around him. So we don't want to do that. That's not healthy or good for us. You know, so when we do catch ourselves like in that place of like, you know, that feeling, that energy of unworthiness, um, we can say to ourselves, I forgive you. I love you. I thank you. I bless you. I release you. And what you're doing is you're releasing the energy that is connected to that person or connected to that thing, event. Okay, so you're releasing the energy so that you can be clear of it and it's easier for you to break those habits that are not serving you. All right, so remember that. I forgive you, I love you, I thank you, I bless you, I release you. And release that energy out of your energy field. It'll take several times, but that's okay. You know, it's it's good to be easy and good to yourself. Because it's it's for you and it's about you. So that you are living for your higher and better good. And your happiness. You know, so... Accountability is when you take your life into your hands and start to define yourself. You start to see the sparkly, wonderful, fun, loving person that you are. And you start putting your focus on that, changing the habits you have grown up and live with that Don't and, and that don't serve you. You are clarifying and defining yourself on your own without others' influences on who or what you are or how you should be. So, and that's the best way to go. You know, it's always good to consider other people's opinions and consider 
others' thoughts and that, and think about how it affects you and if it is for your higher and better good. So these are good ways to assist you with moving into that place of peace and tranquility and self-love for yourself. So um, we're going to we're going to skip off to a break in a second. But when we come back, we're going to be doing the ancestral clearing meditation. This meditation is also on my website at arielgrace.net. Click on the meditation page and scroll down. You can try this med- try to do this meditation like once every couple of weeks. You can focus on um, what line you want to go with, like whether it's your mom line or your dad line. And you focus on that line to clear up any energy that doesn't serve the line and yourself and as you do that meditation and you make it a practice you'll start to see that your maybe your mom or your father starts to change and they also start to forgive and then so on and so on and I've had some people ask me well what about my great great of a great great of a great great grandma what about her (laughs) it's an ancestral clearing meditation so it will clear back to the beginning of your line and on the day that you that it hits the end of the line you may even feel like this shift happen within your being so you feel a little bit lighter so we'll be doing that when we come back from our break So everybody, take a nice deep breath because it's going to be very fun for you. You're listening to A Gang of Girls Radio on letstalkradio.net and agangofgirls.com. Real people and not pre-recorded and regurgitated radio. WGOG DB Clearwater. Let's talk. In 2012, Keith Linder, after successfully obtaining a management position at a prestige healthcare company, decides the time is right for him and his girlfriend to move in together. That's putting things lightly. Weird things begin to happen within days of moving into the modern suburban home. The horrors they witnessed and desperately tried to fight off would end up putting them at the odds with members of the paranormal community and themselves. This gripping story told from the house occupant's point of view not only lists tales, but also includes pictures, video reenactments, commentary, and audio of the events being reported. Author Keith Linder does not ask you to believe him. He only asks you to listen. The Bothell Hell House by Keith Linder, now available on Amazon. The book, The Bothell Hell House, the author, Keith Linder. Order yours today on Amazon. Shopping, dining, beautiful lakes and rivers, and a monster? Welcome to Braxton County, West Virginia. Centrally located, Braxton County, West Virginia is the ideal place to visit. Natural beauty and recreation abound with two beautiful lakes for easy kayaking and canoeing and many hiking trails. Did we mention the Flatwoods Monster? That's right. Visit Braxton County, West Virginia's Flatwoods Monster Museum. And not only learn about the Flatwoods Monster, but walk in the same footsteps as the people who witnessed it. Nearly all of our attractions can be found within a few miles of Interstate 79. Visit us online at BraxtonWV.org. That's BraxtonWV.org. Braxton County, West Virginia. Center yourself here. Haunted, a psychic story by author and radio host Ariel Grace. This is not your average book of hauntings. Haunted, a psychic story is written from a psychic perspective and contains true stories and some handy tips. Written in three parts, Haunted, a psychic story contains chilling adventures, advice from the archangels, and helpful tips used by Ariel Grace to clear haunted homes around the globe. Haunted, a Psychic Story is available on Amazon or you can download straight to your Kindle. Haunted, a Psychic Story by Ariel Grace. 
Get your copy today. Twenty-three past the hour, and you're listening to a Gang of Girls Radio on Let's Talk Radio.net and a Gang of Girls.com. And we're gonna start the ancestral clearing meditation. So, you know, get in a place where you're comfortable and just relax and everything. And this meditation again will assist you. And your ancestors, your mom, your grandma, your great grandma, and so on, or your dad. So pick one, pick a parent, and take a breath. Take a nice deep breath, and we'll clear your energy field first, and then we'll get into the meditation. Okay, so... Take a deep breath. Take another deep breath. And breathe in your favorite color of the day. Whatever color that may be. And breathe it in all the way down to the insides of your toes. Filling each toe, your feet, your ankles, filling your calves, and your knees, filling your thighs, and your hips, filling the core of your being. And watch as the color cascades down your arms and into your fingertips, filling each finger, your thumbs, the palms of your hands, your wrists, your elbows, up to your shoulders, your neck, and your head. And you fill yourself up so much You can see the color coming out the tips of your hair, your eyebrows and eyelashes, your fingernails and toenails, and the pores of your skin. Now, take another deep breath. And as you take that breath, on the exhale, you will see a vortex form at your feet. And with each breath that you take, the vortex spins faster and faster, cleaning and clearing your energetic field, pulling out all thoughts, ideas, and energies that are no longer serving you. With each breath that you take, as the vortex spins faster, and faster, moving up over your feet, your ankles, moving up over the cal- your calves, your knees, your thighs, your hips. With each breath that you take, the vortex spins faster and faster pulling out all thoughts, ideas, and energies that are no longer serving you, cleaning and clearing your energetic field with each breath that you take as the vortex moves up over the core of your being, your shoulders, your neck, and your head, cleaning and clearing your energetic field with each breath that you take as the vortex spins faster and faster. Now, take a deep breath and release the vortex. (sighs) 
Now, take another deep breath. Connect with your mom or your dad, whichever side that you're choosing. Whether they're living or, or passed on, they will still receive this energy, this clearing energy that you are about to give to them. So pick a side, mom or dad. Connect with mom or dad, that feeling of them. Now, visualize a box. Make it a big box. And it can be any type of box you would like. It can be the most beautiful box with a big bow on it. But it has to have a lid. That's the only thing. It has to have a lid. So as you're visualizing your box, fill the box up with any energy that you're feeling right now that doesn't serve you. Anything that feels heavy, anything that you feel guilty about, anything that you um, feel angry about, frustrated about, put it in the box. These feelings aren't going to change the beauty of the box. Because those feelings are beautiful anyway. They are beautiful. And so as you're putting these feelings in the box, you're not filling the box. You're just putting all of these things in the box, releasing them. I release you. I forgive you. I love you. I bless you. I thank you. I release you. Put it in the box. You don't have to analyze it. Think about it. Just place it in there. And as you are filling the box with all of these things, you'll start to feel the energy of your father or mother step forward. Put your last touches on the box. Now pass the box back. Pass it to your parent and tell them, put all of it in the box, release it, let it go. And you'll start to fill that box, even though you're not holding it anymore. You may start to fill that box get heavier. And it's okay. Let the box get filled by your parent. And let your parent know, remember, hand the box back. And you may even start to feel that box as it's being filled and they are releasing their frustration and anger, guilt, whatever it is that they need to release. You may start to feel lighter. Let them know to hand the box back. And as the box gets handled backwards each day that you're up and about and aware, you may feel yourself shift because you've released that energy that no longer serves you. And as the box moves further back, you may feel like a different person, a layer of your energetic field has been pulled off 
and clarified for you. And allow the box to go back. The box goes back to the end. It goes back to source. And let your source clarify everything for you, clean it up for you. And let source handle it for you. Every time you think of the box, just say, I release you. Now, take a nice deep breath. Come back into your body. Filling your feet, your ankles, fill your knees, your thighs, your hips, and the core of your being. Fill your arms, elbows, and hands, your shoulders, your neck, and your head. Now, how do you feel? Do you feel a little bit lighter and brighter? And as you go through your days, you may want to pick a day a month to do this little meditation to assist you with clearing the lineage, clearing your line assisting your ancestors to, present or past, with clearing themselves as well, so that they can be lighter and brighter, and they can feel good. So this, this meditation assists with, um, I'll give you an example for the, the first 20, 20 or 25 years of my life, I felt guilty. Oh. I did. I felt guilty. I didn't do anything really to f make myself feel as guilty as I felt. Um, but I did. I felt guilty. I was like, what the heck is wrong with me that I felt guilty? You know, but one time I was with my my mother, my, my grandmother. Yeah, my mother and my grandmother. And my grandmother was talking. And I was like, oh, that's where it comes from. It's not my guilt. It was just something that, you know, she handed down because that's just the type of person she was. She she just felt, you know, she felt as if she um, hadn't created enough in her life. She hadn't done enough in her life. She felt guilty because of the way she had lived her life. And so she had nothing to feel guilty for either. But it was handed down to her from my great-grand, her mother, and so on. And so the women in the family, you know, had that. And they handed it down to us. And so that's how we felt. And when I was like, oh, wow, and the light bulb went off. And I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> huh. That was cool. And so all I needed was that that moment to figure out, oh, I... That's not my guilt. I need to put give it away. And so when I, um, after thinking about it for a while, I thought about it for about five years or so. How do I release this? How do I get rid of it? How does how does that work? Um, that's when I was inspired for for the box meditation. That's where it came from. Is is that because I love pretty boxes? And so. Um, so handing it backwards, handing yours back to them and them back to them, it goes back to the place where it started and then even further back to clear up the line so that eventually 
you start to feel like, oh, yeah, I released that. I feel so much better. And pretty soon you'll forget about that you felt bad about or you felt guilty about or angry about or frustrated about, you know, something. So um, it will assist the line so that you don't feel like your line is cursed. And also it will help you like change your change your focus or change your attitude, um, make it make your yourself uh, a little bit brighter, a little bit wider, too, so that you can feel that expansion in your auric field, your astral field. OK, because the astral field or our auric field, you know, we how we take those pictures of our auras and and like, woo, wow, some of them are like, woo, bright and shiny. And so, sometimes we see little marks and stuff like that in our aura. And sometimes we see like big globs or something like that in our aura. Well, you can remove those globs or spots um, by doing this meditation, by clarifying your auric field and brightening it up so that then you start to feel more attractive because you're attracting into your life what you want rather than what you don't want. Because if a lot of what you don't want is in your auric field or your astral field, then, you know, it's it's going to culminate. It's going to build. It's going to stay there. It's going to, like, get heavy on you. And you don't want to feel heavy. You want to feel lighter and brighter, right? So try to do the meditation, at, you know, like once every two weeks or so because it takes about that long for the energy field to um, balance out, do this meditation. It takes about that long to go back to the place it started and go back to source so it could be cleared up. And, and it is something that you can do on your own. It empowers you and helps you feel better about you, what you're doing. And it also is that accountability thing, too. You're accountable. You're like saying, okay, well, I'm accountable. I need to have an action to help me with my strategy for getting clear on this. See how that works? It's very fun for you. It's always fun for me. And you may find that as you're like doing different little meditations and that or doing different things to hold yourself accountable, you'll be more present so that you're not missing anything in your life, right? Because you don't want to sit every day like thinking about what could have been, should have been, would have been. Instead, think about like, oh, yeah, what's happening right now and what's going to happen tomorrow and how am I going to feel and do I feel good? Yes, I do. <laughs> so that's a good way of doing it. And there are other meditations on my meditation page, too. Some of you have been asking me about um, prosperity and abundance. I just put up a prosperity and abundance short meditation for to help you pull that prosperity and abundance to you. So that's another way of empowering yourself. Bring that prosperity and abundance to you and pulling it in so that you feel good about how you are leading your life, your career choices, and taking care of your family. Okay, it does work. Um, when I do readings, I find people's pots of gold. That's what I call it. Their prosperity is their pot of gold. And I find that, and I take it, and I push it right in front of them, and I start the energy flow back to them. So it's one of the things that I do during a reading to assist with that prosperity and abundance, you know, because we all need it. You know, we all need prosperity and abundance. And that helps us feel better when we can take care of ourselves. Right. It helps us feel lighter and brighter. It's just one of those things. So please make sure to check out my um, meditation page. There's also the chakra meditation will assist you with clearing your chakras, getting everything balanced and um, pulling that energy up 
And also there's a little bit of soul retrieval at the end of the chakra meditation as well. So that will be fun for you, too, to pick up some things and drop off some things. Mm, That's always fun. So um, there is the automatic writing meditation as well for those of you who are interested in connecting to your spirit guides and angels and getting messages from them. So that's another place where you can go and you can connect with them. That meditation is a practice and it does help because you get to um, connect with those spirit guides and angels and get those clear answers that you so want and desire. All right. Sometimes when you, the first time you do it, you may just get the feel of that spirit guide or angel. The next time you do it, you may get a sentence. The next time you may do it, you may get more information. It just depends on you and um, your guides and how you work with them, whether you're working through feelings, knowing, or hearing. Okay, so when we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about accountability and being present and looking into your future. You're listening to A Gang of Girls Radio on Let's Talk Radio.net and A Gang of Girls.com. Coming soon with your support. Preacher Six is a small town preacher that is summoned to the big city where he ends up finding evil in a literal sense. The characters that he meets along the journey are something special and unique. They could all have their own films made about them. If you like original content that is driven by action and amazing writing, you must support the film Preacher Six. No remakes, redos, sequels, or do overs for us. Let's take film. Back. If you like Quentin Tarantino type films, then you will love Preacher 6. Preacher 6 is like Taxi Driver meets Sin City meets The Prophecy. So please be a part of something awesome. Sometimes darkness just needs a few well placed bullets. Preacher 6. Support this new film at Indiegogo.com and search Preacher 6. That's Indiegogo.com, Preacher 6. Support it and let's take film back. There are thousands of health and beauty products on the market these days, but how many can you say are truly natural? The name says it all, and Naturally by Darla is here to humbly serve, guide, and help to heal all individuals seeking a more natural way of living. NaturallyByDarla.com provides a wide variety of products and services like essential oils, soaps, bombs and salves, powerful mists, and ancient healing techniques. Curious yet? We thought so. And invite you to visit our website, naturallybydarla.com, or call 847-334-1580. That's 847-334-1580. Naturallybydarla.com. Humbly serving for over 10 years. Naturally. Seven past the hour, and you're listening to a Gang of Girls Radio on Let's Talk Radio.net and a Gang of Girls.com. So we were just talking about the meditations, and uh, if you want to check out the other meditations that are on my website, you can go to arielgrace.net and see if anything resonates for you there. Um, they're all there to assist you and to empower you, so that you can take the steps that you need to take, you know, to hold yourself accountable for changing your life. Yeah? Yeah. So, um, when we're, uh, when we're talking about the woulda, shoulda, couldas, um, make sure that when you look at those woulda, shoulda, couldas to throw them in the box, you know, because that's past. That's the past. You're done with the past. You can't go back and change the past, you know, unless you're doing soul retrieval. 
So, you know, uh, make sure that you throw those away because they're a waste of time and they're also a waste of en- your energy focusing on them. Instead, look at your person now. Look at who you are now and um, how wonderful you are now. And if you don't feel like you're wonderful now, start taking the steps to help yourself be wonderful. One of the questions that I get a lot is, if I change, I might lose my friends. Well, no, you won't lose your friends. You may make some decisions or set up some boundaries with your friends, and that's okay. You know, maybe you may only see one one or two of your friends uh, a couple times a month, and that's okay. It doesn't mean that you don't love them anymore. It just means that you're moving forward with your life. And as you move forward, too, maybe those friends will go, Hey, what are they doing to make themselves so remarkable? Let's go find out. And so then they find out and they start resonating with you. And it's and then they're back in the in like seeing you more often or interacting with you more often because it's like that pebble in a pond thing. Once you throw that pebble in there, all those ripples ripple out, you know, and peeps go, hey, what what did you do to make that happen? And you can tell them. And if it resonates with them, they may try it, you know. So create those new habits for yourself, be easy on yourself, be kind to yourself so that it is easier to create those new habits for yourself. Okay? Because we all do crazy stuff. <laughs> we all we all do things that uh oh, maybe we shouldn't have done that, you know, but it's because we're humans and we're having a human experience. <laughs> and it's okay to do stuff that, you know, maybe wasn't like the best thing in the world. Be okay with it. You learn something from it. Maybe like, ah, I'm not going to do that again. <laughs> and just like move forward so that you can feel better about yourself. You can feel clearer and you can do other things. You can try other things. Put your toes in, check them out, see if it works for you. If it doesn't work for you, that's okay. Pull back and do something else. You know, because that's what we're here on this planet to do is to explore and discover things. And how are we going to discover and explore things if we don't allow ourselves to do that? Hmm. (laughs) So try it out. See if try different things and see if they work for you. That's one of the reasons why we have a gang of girls radio is to present to you different ways of being different people and Um, different traditions or different cultures or different, different, so that you can have a different experience and maybe even want to experience that too, right? Yeah. All right, cool. So um, next week on A Gang of Girls Radio, we're going to have Psychic Theo on. He's my bro, and he's going to be doing readings, one-question readings next week. We're going to open the phone lines Um, We're going to be talking to Theo. We're also going to bring in Lisa Holbrook. She is um, a pet communicator. And you all have asked me for more of that, more pet communicators. You want to figure that out. How does that work? You know, that's pretty cool. I've connected with some um, pets and animals and that in the present time that are alive You know, and um, it's a different feeling connecting with a pet and getting info from them. And uh, but Lisa also connects with your pets that have passed on. So uh, that will be fun and interesting. So if you have pet questions, get them ready for next week and you'll enjoy her. She is very, very cool. All right, so that's what we're doing next week on A Gang of Girls Radio. And then the week after, we'll be having the astrology show. So remember to send me your birth time, birthplace, and birth date with your question to A Gang of Girls Radio, or yeah, A Gang of Girls Inc. at gmail.com. And I'll get that info over to Rhonda so that she can get your answer ready for you. Okay? 
All right, because remember, the astrology show is the first Sunday of the month. Okay. So uh, you can check out some more of our awesome radio programs here at Let's Talk Radio dot net. Uh, there is we have got like a full schedule now and it's filling up even more. I, I can't believe how many shows are already on our radio station. It's so cool. Todd and I think this is we're we're awesome. We're rocking it. So if you have an idea about hosting your own radio show, let Todd know, you know, let him know, see what he thinks. You know, you may have an awesome idea. Hmm. That'll be very fun for you. So we have Surviving Evidence Monday nights, 8 Eastern with Chris and Phil. We have Keeping the Spirits Alive Tuesday nights with John Tobin. Haunted Voices Radio with Todd Bates at 9 Eastern. Um, Paranormal Experience is on Wednesday nights, 8 Eastern with Kat Hobson. Paranormal Evidence, Wednesday nights, 10 Eastern with Tony Rathman. Ghost Talk Radio, Friday nights, 8 p.m. Eastern with Shelly. And Fate Radio with Todd Bates, Friday nights, 9 Eastern. Path of Discoveries will start in May with Lisa Berkland, Sunday nights, 6 p.m. Eastern. And a Gang of Girls Radio, Sunday nights, 8 Eastern. If you would like to advertise with Let's Talk Radio.net, just send us an email, let us know what you are advertising, and we'll see what we can do for you. Because you never know what could happen, right? Yeah. All right. So thank you for joining us tonight at A Gang of Girls Radio. We totally enjoyed you. And remember to keep your hearts open and align with the energy of love. This is Ariel Grace from A Gang of Girls Radio. Good night, everyone. Have a wonderful week.